Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your Ozymandian king sitting at the end of the world forever, and let's jump into what is probably the penultimate episode of Xenoclash. I was banished from the family, but I still had to confront father-mother. But to find her alone, I had to get past his bodyguards my brothers, and the Northern Gate Gang. So I tried sneaking through the sewers, hoping I'd find an exit near Father Mother. So the first thing to point out here is that WoW game designers really do love a sewer level. It's astonishing to me that just every game, even this game, which, you know, bucks with tradition in so many other ways, is that a corpse? Uh, has its sewer level. Um, it's kind of amusing because there's an idea in this, <laughs> there's a sense in this game that the developers were sort of throwing mechanics at the wall, so every couple of chapters there's a new mechanic that stays for a little while and then disappears. Huh, I thought I was going to have to fight that, but okay. And, um, this one is sewer monsters, I guess. I blame Star Wars for this, for starting the trend of having a sewer with a tentacle monster in it. Um, as far as I can tell, that happened once in 1977 and then became mandatory in every video game ever made since. Are we- are we cool or are you- oh, okay. Oh, uh, that was remarkably easy. This is probably the shortest, easiest segment of the game. Uh, you just walk forwards and it's fine. I do love these weird gloopy faces, though. Um... I talked about this before, but there's a there's an aspect of the designs, and well, as soon as I go through that door, there's going to be a cutscene, isn't there? So let's wait until I get to the other side. Oh, I guess we're fine. Uh, it's always nice to see a nice developed city, um, and this actually is good for the thing I was about to talk about. All of these weird details and these chunky lopsided houses, and yes, the magic potato too. They all kind of add up to a an aesthetic feeling that reminds me most strongly of um, old point-and-click adventure games and old Infinity Engine games, especially Planescape Torment. It's nice to see this guy again as well. Um, clearly lost in the source, so he I guess he got some more rooster blood after all. It's also nice to learn that he is in fact not completely butt-ass naked as I assumed in the pub previously. He's got the teeniest little codpiece. There's a lot of codpieces in this game actually. Anyway, um, chapters like this, they resemble nothing so much walking as walking through the backdrops from a game like Planescape Torment, and I think that's really neat. It's bizarre to experience those places in first person when you normally see them drop top down from above. So at this point, I'm not sure if Father Mother, uh, the secret of Father Mother has even been revealed yet to Gat. I suppose this is after Gat finds out, because Gat finds out after having been uh, shunned by the family, and this is after he went away for a little while more and then came back again, which is sort of ex detailed off screen, but not really. So there must be pretty strong ties between Father Mother's brood and uh, the Northern Gate Gang because not only is the Northern Gate Gang clearly complicit in Father Mother's terrible dark secret, uh, which we can tell based on the fact that, well, Father Mother's boys and daughters and so on aren't allowed into the uh, Northern Gate Gang's bar, which is where Father Mother goes for suspicious things. Now, this is a tiny detail, but when we saw that happen previously, uh, there was a, a pigsty out back, and about 20 little baby pigs running around. That seems like it might just be an incidental detail, but it turns out very little in this game is an incidental detail. So, um, those pigs are actually part of the... I guess plot is what you'd call it. 
of um, Father Mother's secret sins. I do have some stuff to say about Father Mother later with regards to like queer representation and non-binarity because I don't think I'd ever seen a character that was, for lack of a better term, non-binary. Um, for... Oh wow. That's my second KO with a gun in this game. Absolute glass ribcage, this one. I think I was talking previously about the uh, diversity of the uh, fighter designs and the fact that while there are a fair number of female fighters, it's still the vast majority are male, and a lot of the female fighters are monstrous, which is a really common way of um, designers avoiding having to feel like they've got women being beaten up. Because, you know, monstrous women don't count, do they? So it's a pain in the ass to fight the mechanic and these guys at the same time. The best way to do that is to hide underneath him and fight them, you know, hand to hand. You know, man to rat monster. Man to extremely, extremely skinny red-headed guy. Oh, I guess that's still technically a kind of one. But the main difficulty is just managing everyone to make sure none of them are shooting at you while you're fighting someone else. Which is quite dishonorable, I think. You know, it's fine when I do it, because it's different. It's different when it's me. But it's a pain in the ass when I do it. Look at this guy. I love my primarily elbow-based fighting style. So it's a good thing there are so many magic potatoes scattered around here on the street. Oh, no. Jesus, that was like a full volley. They've been practicing like red coats in 1620. Actually, I'm not up on my military history. I have no idea when red coats were a thing. Anyway. I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me. If I can get through this fight in one piece. Come on, guys. Let's let's just be done now. Can't we cease the hostilities? Why can't we be pals? Anyway, I wonder if it's some kind—it's a genuine alliance, or if Father Mother has some kind of hold over them in some way. I'm just gonna shoot you. Like, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. I'm just gonna take the shortcut. That's not what they say. There's a popular phrase that describes the way Indiana Jones once shot that guy, but I don't remember what it was. Anyway, uh, none of these people are dead, which always strikes me as kind of the uh, well-meaning parent's way of explaining things to a small child. Like, no, of course, that, of course he's fine, don't worry, he's not dead. He only fell off of a rooftop after being shot 16 times. Ow, fuck off. I do find myself wondering, is this rifle the same rifle that the hunter gave Gat ages ago? The game uses the same model for it, but I think it would be just a nice little... I guess nod is the wrong word, but a nice little through line if this was... Uh, just the very same rifle that he's been carrying this whole time and using to hunt and so on. Although every time it's time to hunt you get given the uh, double pistols. So this whole chapter is kind of like a best of. <laughs> You get to see almost every fighter that you've fought so far again. Which I think is, an, is just kind of nice. Although it's also a bit of a gauntlet, because uh, it's just fight after fight after fight, and it can be difficult to manage your health properly. It's always nice to see Hene again as well. Dressed like a lost Saiyan, wandering out of Dragon Ball Z and into another narrative that's primarily about punches. Jesus, I wasn't kidding about my fight style being primarily elbows based, huh? No, you don't get guns, only I get guns because I'm the protagonist. In all honesty, it seems kind of unfair for people to gang up on me and have guns. Guns are kind of a leveling factor in my favour. Ow. There we go. That's a nice finisher. I do wonder why everyone in this world seems to be extremely good at fist fighting. I guess it's because guns don't really do much. 
Uh, the supremacy of the firearm can't really get going if everybody just gets back up again. You know, five minutes after getting shot multiple times in the face. I always hated you, Arthur. You're always my least favourite brother. I'm glad I got to ricochet you off a pillar. You ready for the finisher? Oh. There we go. Got a little bit overconfident there, but that's fine. Now, somewhere here, there should be a big hammer. I don't think we fought Thurium before. Uh, I think that the character model was used for, for one of the... Uh, Actually, it might just—it might be a different character model that's just very similar, or supposed to be someone of the same species. But um, is species even a thing in this world? Or do human parents just pop out random monster babies? That's an interesting question, which the game has no interest in answering, and which, to be honest, I would prefer not to know the answer to. Anyway, oh, now see, that's hardly fair. I already beat you. I shot you in the face, and you fell off a roof. How are you fine? So, as always, the trick with a, uh, a heavy enemy is to basically just circle around them. Uh, if you can hit them from the side or the back, they can't block you with that block thing they have. I could use some healing. So, there's something um, that I learned a long time ago playing Quake when I was like 12, which is that uh, health health is more valuable in your health bar than it is as a health pack. Even if you have, even if you have, uh, hmm, now see, I keep, I keep pressing the attack button and my attacks aren't actually activating. Which sounds like an excuse I'm making, but is actually true. Anyway, um, I think there's an instinct to wait on healing until you have, uh, a big need for healing, but if you would be able to get the full benefit out of a healing item, you are better off using it. That that health is always better in your health bar because you are going to have to heal yourself eventually. Um, so it's better to do it when you have the chance and keep your health tops up, rather than save health packs and then use them all at once. Not that this game has health packs. Right. Ah, come on, stay down. Mind you, Gat does... Gat's kind of, uh... got to run in a straight line towards whatever your objective is. Um, Corwid monomania has led to a lot of problems, hasn't it? You can't just leave and let it be. But then they did send mercenaries after him, so... But no, they... Ugh, the time... the time shifting in the narrative got me confused again. They only sent mercenaries after he killed Father Mother. What's wrong with you? How dare you try hurt our father mother, you Corwin! Father mother, tell them to let me pass! You know my problem is with you and not with them! I never thought one of my own children would turn against me. I'm sorry. I love that I literally just kicked the shit out of two of these guys and they're already back on their feet, ready to fight me again. Also, you might notice that their appearances are slightly different post-fight. They actually have... As a fight progresses, progresses and they lose hit points, they actually do get... Uh, bloodied. It's more noticeable on characters like Renat, who I think a bit more attention was given to. Although... Although a vast amount of attention was given to pretty much every character in the game design-wise, because, as I was saying a long time ago, they're all really diverse and interesting designs. I don't think we fought Pop before, actually. I believe he was in the big Corwid fight in the previous chapter, but I think that's the first time he shows up, much like... Uh, much like your Super Saiyan sister, whose name I can't remember who we fought, downstairs. 
So the difficulty in this fight is that they have fire support from up above, so if you want to fight them, you have to kind of circle around down here out of the way. That does let you get uh, double bangers like that a bit more easily. Which, of course, means he's reloaded this for me, which is very kind of him. Oh, what is your problem? You are more of a detriment to the rest of these guys than, frankly, I am. And I just punched your friend on the beak. You're really, really too willing to go for the rocket launcher. I love the way they bounce backwards like that. Alright, let's fight like men. Or, well, let's fight like fighters. You know, let's not be gender essentialist about punches. You can tell I'm focusing because I stopped talking. I love the pain squawk he makes whenever you knock him back like that. Anyway, bye. Oh shit, he survived. That's all for you. Right, you actually do have to go um, knock out your other two siblings on the roof as well, which is a nuisance. Because it's difficult to do when you only have a grenade launcher and they are up at a weird angle. I don't think there's any other ranged weapons down here. You just have to make do with this. Since, the, you know, they also have cover as well, which is really quite rude and unfair. You'd think they'd be sporting. Ow! I will never get tired of the cartoonish but dumptish noise of the... Uh... <gasps> yes! Crossbow. Actually, the rocket launcher might be the better option. It's not a rocket launcher, it's a grenade launcher. Because I can arc stuff over the top. Ostensibly. Allegedly. I think that's the lot. Well, it looks like it's time to fight my shitty clone and my much cooler sister. I feel like, in all honesty, he must have some kind of inferiority complex. Gat's like the cool guy. Zitsi's just like also there. He thinks he's he thinks he's got a nice thing with his with his uh, snakes theme, but he's nobody's favorite. Let's be honest. Part of the difficulty of fighting these guys is that, and by these guys I mean everybody, is that they have these special moves you don't have, which... Now, that's not yes, that's mine. God, it really sucks, doesn't it? Everybody who's grown up with siblings will know that they just have this habit of touching your shit, regardless of whether you want them to or not. Hey, don't touch my shit. That's my grenade launcher. I won it fair and square by beating the shit out of the rest of our siblings. Oh, uh, bye. Shit, did I kill him? Just slither through that gap like a letterbox. Wow. Remount you always, always, always my favorite. And shit like that is mine. Why can't I do a cool helicopter spin kick? As I said, it's really cool as a detail that their character models change as they take damage. I don't respect any of the rest of these people, Rima. It's just you and me. I'm gonna fight you properly. There we go, there's a rad finisher. And that is... Shit, that's not the end, is it? <laughs> I guess that's not all for today. You would rather have them kill me than tell your secret!
You feel what I've done is unfair, huh? but I let you go away. Why did you have to come back? Take that! Father Mother's design is almost intended to evoke patheticness with this kind of cringing attitude and this, and this uh, hunched, uh, tragic face. But um, that's kind of interesting in itself because it means that you forget how big and genuinely intimidating Father Mother is. Even here, they're still not at their full height. It's genuinely uncomfortable when you have to see Father Mother's full size. This is a little bit of a puzzle boss fight. You can't really fight them, uh, fight them fairly because, well, as I said, they are literally four times your height. Whenever they pull themselves up to their their full size, it's really kind of freakish, intimate. Well, not freakish, but scary, genuinely intimidating. Not least with those massive talons on each foot. So, um, this might be slightly spoilery, but this is one of the only games that pulls off the absolute power move of um, having you fight its final boss twice, as in its final boss fight twice. I don't mean like fight the same, you know, I don't mean like a multi-phase boss fight, I mean that we are going to be back here again later. Don't we have a great family? The biggest family in Xenozoic? I won't let you break it! There's something genuinely well observed about the way that Father Mother's gangly legs uh, collapse beneath them. It looks like it hurts, really. Like, have you ever had a nasty hit on your shin? You know, where there's not much flesh between the bone and the skin. That's basically Father Mother's whole deal. So, uh, I might have left it a bit late now, but I was intending to talk about the... Uh, the semiotics of Father Mother with regards to, you know, queer coding or explicit queerness with the fact that this is a, a non-binary entity. Um, because it's kind of interesting, there is, there is a weird tenderness to Father Mother and to Father Mother's family that we will see later on. Even, even with regards to Gat and this whole horrible eventuality. But, um, that doesn't change the fact that, uh, well, it's probably better to talk about this when we find out what the secret is. You were my son. You were my son. Of all my children. Remember Metamox's final lesson well. You're still not telling me Father Mother's secret? No. Now that she is dead, no one should ever know it. And on that enigmatic final note, that will be all from me for today. Join me next time for the finale. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.